ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اشرح لي صدر ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear brothers and sisters One of the great um, bounties and ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us is that he has blessed us with something extremely unique and special. And that is the tie of Islam. That is the relationship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, not through the kinship or the relationship of blood or country, but something far greater, far greater than that. And that is the bond that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in our hearts, binding us together through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani one may be proud, uh, and you know the feelings, and the one who, for example, traveled overseas or went overseas, you know that delightful feeling that you feel when you see someone from your country or from your people in a foreign place. Uh, it's like you're traveling in the airport and you hear an Aussie accent and you look, ah, oh, another Aussie's here. Or if you're in a land where there's no Arabs, for example, and if you're Arab, you hear someone speak Arabic, straight away, your ears and your attention is put onto that person. Anyone ever felt like that before? You know, subhanAllah. I was doing tawaf once in Ramadan. And Ramadan is, whoever been to Mecca, Ramadan knows how congested it is. A lot of people, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people just on top of each other. And I'm doing tawaf randomly. And subhanAllah, I came across one of the brothers in the masjid. Wallahi, I'm not even close to this brother. I, don't, I, I barely know him. But because I see him in the masjid and I saw him in this place that was foreign to us, يعني, it was like such a, a happy moment for me. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put between the Muslimin a bond far greater than blood relationship. And this is why in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alliances were formed not through relatives or not due to relatives I should say and enmity and hatred was shown to even the closest of relatives by blood but because they they were the enemies of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam This was irrelevant all of a sudden. And there is many, many, many stories of a father looking for his son in the battlefield because his father was on the side of the Muslimin and his son was yet to become a Muslim. He was looking for him in the battlefield. Scenarios where uncles and nephews, where one of them was trying to touch the bead of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the great the great warrior and companion of Rasulullah Sallallahu Abu Bakr was standing over the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in protection of him of him and he would strike the hand of that person turned out to be his uncle and he says take your hand 
of the bead of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A father and daughter, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ummu Habiba, when her father came to Medina and snuck into her house for protection, this is a daughter to her father, imagine this, her own father. Before he sat down on the map that Rasulullah used to sit upon, she rolled it up and she let him sit on the floor. So he didn't understand why, he, why she did this. Her, his own daughter, imagine. She said, you are filthy. You are filthy. You are still a mushrik. And Allah said, najas. That the disbelievers and the polytheists, they're filthy. This is what Allah says. So his daughter said, you are still dirty. I cannot let you, your dirty self, sit upon the mat that Rasulullah the purest of men, sit on. I cannot allow this. Look at this. Look at this bond. Look at this feeling of connection to the Muslimin. And the feeling of disconnection from the disbelievers and the enemies of the Muslimin, even if they are the closest of blood relatives to you. Who put this feeling amongst us? Who made us feel this feeling? Who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because, because it is Allah that has made and created this bond for us. And this is why this bond is very sacred. And this bond is very powerful. And I want to speak about, very quickly inshallah, I don't want to make the dafs too long. About one of the great hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recorded in Imam Muslim's authentic collection. About our mentality and our perspective towards believers. How we should be, how we should think of our Muslim brother. The Prophet Sallallahu said very, very powerful words. The full hadith goes as such where the Prophet Sallallahu says, لا تحسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا يبع بيعكم على بيع بعض وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا المسلم أخ المسلم لا يسلمه ولا يخذله ولا يحقره ولا يكذبه التقوى ها هنا التقوى ها هنا التقوى ها هنا وأشار إلى صدره صلى الله عليه وسلم بحسب امرئ من الشر أن يحقر أخاه المسلم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم says I want to focus on the second part of the hadith more but I'll translate the whole hadith inshallah ta'ala the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says do not have hasad between each other envy do not do a najash we'll explain that shortly inshallah do not have hatred and enmity towards one another. Do not become enemies of one another. Do not sell upon the sale of your brother. Al-Muslim and be, O oh believers of Allah, brothers. This is what the Prophet ﷺ commanded us. The Prophet ﷺ says, Al-Muslim, Akhul Muslim, the brother surely is the brother of another Muslim. He does not oppress him, nor does he betray him, nor does he lie and deceive him, nor does he belittle him. Verily, piety is here, and he said this three times while pointing to his chest. Uh, it is sufficient of evil, of sin, for a believer to belittle his brother. Kullu al-Muslimi ala al-Muslimi haram. Everything upon or everything concerning a Muslim is haram. His blood, his money, and his honor. Let's go through this into a little bit of detail, inshallah ta'ala. La tahasadu, the first quality the Prophet 
forbade us from adopting or from having. And that is al-hasad. What is al-hasad? In simple terms, it is the disliking of your brother receiving ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see your brother, he has some, or he's been bestowed upon by some of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with something. Allah granted him something. You wish that this is removed from him, a'udhu billah. Envy. This filthy jealousy. You don't like to see your Muslim brothers or sisters enjoying the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it be something physical, whether it be something uh, metaphysical. Could be knowledge, or it could be something that Allah has blessed you with, a good car, a good job, a good wife, a good position, whatever. Could be knowledge, could be beauty. You look at your Muslim brother and instead of being happy for him, you have some dirt in your heart. May Allah protect us. And this dirt is called al-hasad. This envy. I don't like to see this on you. And I wish that it is taken away from you. This is al-hasad. As for the believers, the ones who have a pure heart, the Prophet sallallahu says what? لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخي ما يحب لنفسه A true sign of Iman, an indication of Iman, is that a person loves for himself, loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Every single one of us are happy that Allah bless us with some bounty. Every single one of us, one of us is happy if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes our affairs easy. Every one of us is happy. So then why are you not happy that your brother received the same beautiful treatment? Subhanallah. This is a sign of weakness in iman and evil in the heart. Al-hasad is from one of the catastrophes, subhanallah. That if it attacks the person's heart, it is difficult to get rid of. And if someone feels this way uh, towards your Muslim brothers or sisters, that they have something and that displeases you, so much so that you start to dislike that Allah has bestowed this mercy upon this person. And the disliking of you towards it makes you wish that it is removed from this person. Know that your heart has been afflicted with poison. Your heart has been poisoned. To get rid of hasad, first and foremost, only Allah can get rid of it. So ask Allah to purify your heart from it. That's step number one. Step number two is to tell yourself and to be careful of not taking any action towards that feeling. Towards that feeling. Because that's a feeling in the heart at the end of the day. You have to fight this feeling. And if you're not fighting this feeling and you have this feeling towards your brother without trying to uh, control it, then this is sinful. This is sinful to feel about your brothers like this. Because the Nabi said, La tahasadu. Do not have this envy and this extreme jealousy from one another. This is completely impermissible. But inshallah, if you are fighting it, I hope that you are not sinful for that, inshallah ta'ala. But you must fight it. وَلَا تَنَاجَشُوا وَلَا تَبَاغَضُوا Do not hate one another. Do not hate one another. And do not cause, do not uh, perform actions that will cause you to hate one another. Subhanallah. We as believers, again, some of the indication, the strong indicators of the belief in one's heart is that he loves the believers. He loves the believers. He loves the people. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجَعَلُ لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَنُ وُدَّا Verily, the ones who believe and perform righteous actions, 
Allah will make upon them love. What the scholars mention about this is that Allah will make them loved, beloved to the creation. Allah will love him and Allah will make him beloved to the creation. Because that's what happens, my dear brothers and sisters. That's what happens when Allah loves you. When you perform actions to try to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will love you. And if he loves you, as the hadith mentions, I'm, I'm quoting a hadith here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if I love my slave, I call upon the inhabitants of the heavens. And I say, O oh my angels, O oh inhabitants of the heavens, surely I love this person, so love him. And then all the inhabitants of the heaven will love him. And then the hadith mentions, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause his acceptance and love to be placed upon him in this dunya. To have love for your brother. Not to hate and despise your brother. The opposite of the kuffar. In turn, we are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is something very important in our creed. Something very important that we must think about and implement in our ideology and our creed and our belief system is that we love one another. Why? Why do we love one another? This is the question. Why? I'm asking the audience. Yeah. We love for Allah. I love this brother because I just saw him worshipping Allah. I don't even know him. You, you're a bad boxer, but I still love you anyway. No, I'm joking. He's a good boxer, mashallah, safe. I don't know him. I don't know these brothers. I don't know half of the masjid. I don't know them. But the fact that they worship Allah means that there is a sacred bond between me and this person. Which forces me to... This bond is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib, what about the kuffar? What about the kuffar? What bond do we have with the kuffar? If we are ordered to love the Muslims, how should we... Our heart and feeling be towards the kuffar. Tell me. Mm. A disassociation. And? Uh, what are you laughing for? Give me the answer. It's an obvious answer. Huh? And a hatred towards them. Hatred towards them. This is our natural feeling that we have towards the people that Allah hates. Because if you love for Allah, how can you love for Allah someone that Allah hates? Make sense? What is the evidence? The brother's a bit hesitant, hesitant because he doesn't know the evidence maybe. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا تَجِدُ قَوْمًا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ يُوَادُّونَ مَنْ حَادَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهِ You would not find a people who believe in Allah and the last day, us, the ones who believe in Allah and the last day, you will not find them, Allah says in the Quran, you will not find them loving those who fight or those who are enemies of Allah and His Messenger. Man had Allah wa Rasulah. The one who deny and turn away and fight Allah and His Messenger. But these people are dis Allah is displeased with these people. Allah hates these people. So how do we then love them? So our default position is that our love is exclusive, exclusive to the believers. Our alliance, as the brother said, disassociation. And our association is based upon Allah, not based upon desires. Because our desires, if you truly loved Allah, our desires will be in sync with that which Allah wants. Yes, this is how you love someone. Subhanallah, it reminds me of the hadith of one of the Sahabi. One of the Sahaba. He used to dislike a certain type of food. I think it was honey from memory. He said, I dislike this type of food. Until I heard that Rasulullah loved this food, he said this food became the most beloved thing to me. Subhanallah. 
your emotions, your feelings, your taste buds change due to the love of Allah and His Messenger. Allahu Akbar. Your own father, if he is a najas mushrik, he shouldn't be sitting on the same rug as Rasulullah sallallahu not even in the same place. Rasulullah sat on this rug. And you, mushrik, you come to sit on the rug and you're still not a Muslim? I cannot allow that. This is the meaning of Al-Iman, my dear brothers and sisters. This is what it means to be a believer. Not just a word like this that it said. I'm a believer. Alhamdulillah, I pray, huh? Look, I come to the masjid, mashallah. But then you're backstabbing your brothers. You're not supporting your brothers. You're denouncing your brothers. You're hating your brothers. You're becoming envious of your brothers. And you say, I'm a believer. Check your heart again. See what type of believer you are. La ilaha illallah. Let's continue. Wala tadabaru. Do not become enemies to one another. Is the, is the meaning of this. Because when you become an enemy of one another, this has a ripple effect. Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and obey Allah and His Messenger, and do not dispute. Do not dispute. Fatafshalu. Because dispute causes, it causes what? Dispute causes uh, segregation, it causes corruption. It causes for people to turn against one another, to not support one another. And it causes failure. فَتَفْشَلُوا You fail. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something. He says, وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Your strength, your power, your authority will then become dissolved. You disputing with one another, with Muslims disputing amongst one another, causes an overall failure. Causes an overall failure. We have to be very, very careful of this, subhanAllah. وَلَا يَبِعْ بَعْضُكُمْ عَلَى بَيْعِ بَعْضُ وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا And do not sell upon the sale of your brother. Yani this is some of the things that cause, especially when it comes to money issues, subhanAllah. You have to be very careful with money issues with your Muslim brother. The Prophet ﷺ says, do not sell or buy, in that regards, uh, upon the sale of your brother. What does this mean? It means, in very simple terms, if you know your brother is buying something and he went and bought something, you don't go to him and say, uh, don't worry about this sale, I'll sell you something better. Because what's this going to do to the store owner? Uh, it's going to make you say, what are you doing? I, mean, I just sold him now, you're trying to make him return his sale so you can give him something better? No doubt this causes hate amongst one another. This causes someone to fight one another. SubhanAllah. And this is completely impermissible also to do, to do that. If you know someone is in a trade with another Muslim, uh, then you either advise him before the sale uh, or خلص, let the sale happen. Yani, I'm still in negotiation. I haven't made the deal to buy this. There is no problem in this state to say, brother, I have a better product, or let me guide you to a better product. There's no issue. Because there is no sale that has happened. It's just negotiation. But after the sale has proceeded, and you have yani, proceeded with the sale, then you come and say to him, I have something better. You should have come to me first. What would that cause? It will cause him to regret himself and if the store owner hears about this no doubt it'll cause him to hate you too and this is completely impermissible to do that after this point of the sale and then Allah and then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says something very very beautiful and very powerful he says look at this beautiful hadith look at this beautiful hadith my dear brothers and sisters Allah and be all of you O oh, slaves of Allah, ikhwana, brothers. 
And Nabi Sallallahu is reminding us with two reminders. With two beautiful reminders here that we can extract from this just this little section here in the hadith. The first thing is remember that you are all slaves of Allah. You're all subject to the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are all owned by Allah. The ones who obey and the ones who disobey. You're all, you're all owned by Allah anyway. That's the first thing. He reminded us of who our owner is. And then he also says, وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا And then he reminds us upon which basis is our brotherhood based upon. It is based upon that bond. It is based upon that bond that we have as slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya salam. This is what makes us brothers. Wallahi, this is what makes us brothers. Yani, subhanallah, many people, many people, I know very, very well, they would trust a complete stranger to their family in regards to blood with their life and their wealth and their property and they would not trust their own blood brother. How is this possible? I'm sure everyone of you know this, yes? I'm sure you've come across scenarios where that person's brother, he's either a disbeliever or he's a very bad believer and you don't trust him. Nor do you love him that much because his connection with Allah is too weak. But you love the brother that you see in the masjid that he is a complete stranger to you. Maybe he never stepped a foot into your house. But because your brotherhood uh, is bonded over the love of Allah and over righteousness, you love him more better than your own real brother. Is this true or not? Who experienced this, my dear brothers? Huh? I'm sure all of us experience this to some level. That shows us the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the power of, of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can make you prefer a complete stranger to your family and to your blood probably even to a different country to you altogether, you prefer him over sometimes your blood brother. Or in many cases, if you're a revert, for example, and your parents are kuffar, over your own parents sometimes. Because this is natural. This bond, if you understand the bond that you have between you and your brothers, wallahi, you will not believe it. It's just so astonishing, so beautiful. Look at the stories of the Sahaba. Look at the stories how... They treated each other. Come from Mecca to Medina. Yaqi, the guy says, I have two wives, take one of them. I have half my wealth, take half of my wealth. What do you want? Take it. It is a sacrifice. And this sacrifice is only due to Islam. Nothing else. Nothing else. Islam causes someone to love that person so much. Such a deep love. La ilaha illallah. Wa kunu ibad Allahi ikhwana. Be slaves of Allah, brothers. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam goes on to say, "Al Muslim akhu al Muslim." How we should treat one another. A Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. Brother of a Muslim. La yadlimu. He doesn't oppress him. لا يخذله He does not turn his back towards him. Turn his back from him. Al-Khudlan is one of the nastiest traits a person can have. May Allah protect us. What is Al-Khudlan, my dear brothers and sisters? What is Al-Khudlan? What we see from many Muslims today towards our brothers. Unfortunately. Al-Khudlan, uh, this word, what it means, is that when a person a Muslim is put in a scenario and in this scenario he wishes that someone would come and support him and then they see that scenario another person sees that scenario and they allow it to happen rather they might increase in it too yani imagine yourself you're being bashed by some random yeah and you're there being on the and you're there on the floor being, getting your head kicked in. And you look at a Muslim over there. 
what's the first thought that comes to you? Alhamdulillah, I have a supporter. I have someone that's going to come help me in this situation. And then this Muslim comes and goes, Oh, you deserve it. Here's another kick from me. And just imagine yourself for that moment. What's the feeling that will come into your heart at that moment? What's the feeling that you would feel? This feeling here, the translation of it is called Al-Khudlan. The same way that our Muslim brothers and sisters have been oppressed and persecuted. Palestine is new. Well, the genocide from 7th of October is new. They've been oppressed for over 70 years now. But it's not the latest trend. Yani it's not, it, it just became the hottest trend recently. It's like, what about Syria the past 15 years? What about before that, the start of Palestine? What about Iraq in the early 2000s? What about Afghanistan? The past 50, 60, 70 years. And what do we see from some Muslims or so-called Muslims? MashaAllah, they haven't got the correct aqidah, they deserve it. Because there's a statue in Gaza, they deserve to be bombed until they come back to the right aqidah. SubhanAllah al La ilaha illallah. Ka'inu, the Jews, they have the correct aqidah and this is why they've won us. Ma? Yeah, SubhanAllah, look at the stupidity. People mocking the Muslimin. People denouncing that we should aid the Muslimin in a monetary in a monetary way. We talk about the boycotting. One ignorant brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him and forgive him. He was sincere, I hope. But he seemed to be sincere, inshallah ta'ala. Yesterday after Maghrib Salah, when I announced the boycotting thing, he came into the office saying, how can we boycott when we haven't got the ruler's permission to boycott? Typical madkhali perspective. Ya khi, how fooled are these people? Wallahi. Like how, how, like how much foolishness do you have to drown into to realize that you're drowning? I asked him very simply, Akhi, which, which ruler do we listen to? The one that's an undercover Zionist or the one that's aiding the Zionists? Which one do we follow? The one that's allowing their country to be used as an airbase for the US Army to come and aid the Israelis to, 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 to continue massacring your brother and your sisters. These are the ones that we have to seek permission from? What Islam are you following? Wallahi. What sunnah are you talking about? When you say this is against the sunnah, yakhi, what sunnah? As Sheikh Mustafa al-Adawi, subhanAllah, he came out with a video yesterday saying, yakhi, you've made these rulers of the status of Allah. What are you going to ask tomorrow? If I want to buy my kids some sweets, I have to ask the rulers permission to... If I want to get married, let me get the ruler's permission before I get married. If I want to divorce my wife, let me get the ruler's permission to divorce my wife. Very simple analogies. Wallahi, my dear brothers, I'm going to put exactly the same analogy that I gave to the brother yesterday. Exactly the same analogy. I said, your father, he's sitting in the house with you. And you're sitting there. And your mother is there. Your father is opening the door for a stranger to come and poison your mother in front of you, to kill your mother in front of you. And your father says to you, don't get up and do anything. Do you get up or you don't get up? He goes, well, I don't know. I don't know. I have to think about it. I can't use logic in this, in this circumstance. Because using logic is against the sunnah, apparently. <laughs> Wallahi, where are they? Where are the sunnah, yakhi? Where is knowledge from these people, yakhi? I asked him, and I asked him, Wallahi, maybe five, six times, I asked him. Yeah, it's a very simple analogy. A very simple analogy, very simple example. Anyone with a bit of decency, with a bit of iman burning in their heart, would say, I will no way allow anyone to come poison my mother, even if my father says not to, not to move. I said, subhanAllah, anyone with a bit of logic, with a bit of sense, with a bit of ghira, a bit of jealousy over their deen and over their people, would 
And so in the same way, they would say, no one will ever stand. No matter who tells me, not to defend my mother, I will defend my mother to the death. I said, so what is more important to you? The Muslim Ummah as a total or an individual Muslim as your mother? You are not happy to accept this upon your mother. But yet you are happy to accept this upon your brothers. No, 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 we can't go to jihad. Why? Because the rulers of our land didn't give permission. We can't defend the babies being massacred and slaughtered. We can't defend them because our rulers didn't give us permission to do so. Yeah, wallahi. What do I say? What do I say after this? This is Al-Khudlan. This is the definition of Al-Khudlan. Yeah, you're a coward. You're scared. Shut your mouth. Don't say anything. Don't defend these tyrants and these kuffar. Don't defend them. You're a coward. Sit down and shut your mouth. This is what you do. But to come and say, I will not call the people to go and defend their own rights. Defend their land. Defend the blood of the innocent babies and mothers being spilt like water on the, on the floor. I can't go defend them because my country didn't give me permission to. And then they say, this is the deen, ya khi. Wallahi, this is what burns me the most. They wrap this in the wrapping of deen. This is their deen, mashallah. This is not the sunnah. It's not the sunnah to, to, to defend my mother. Imagine this. It's not the sunnah to defend my mother if someone's coming inside my house and trying to kill my mother because my father said not to do anything about it. Subhanallah. And then some of the, the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, they come out and say, Ya akhwa, it's not an emotional thing. You can't be emotional about it. You have to look at the evidences. I don't, wallahi, I don't know what, what they keep referring to. They keep saying evidences and dalil and the sunnah. What are they talking about, ya akhi? Please show me a deen. Please show me where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says that allow your Muslims to be killed and sit and watch and do nothing. Please show me the deen that allows this. Please show me the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu that allows this. La ilaha illallah. It's a problem. It's a problem. Rather, some of them even pushed up, up a level. Boycotting McDonald's Without the permission of the ruler, you become a khariji for that. Imagine this. Mr. Faris Al-Hamadi or whatever his name is. The agent rap. Sheikh TikTok, Mr. Crossfit. Subhanallah. Now, if you boycott McDonald's, my dear brothers, uh -huh. <laughs> if you choose no, now not to support Zionist brands, you have disobeyed Wali Al-Amr. You have disobeyed the ruler, which makes you a khariji now. Subhanallah. So how do you become a good Muslim now? How do you become a good Muslim? Uh, go to Starbucks, get a nice big coffee, and watch the spilling of the blood of your Muslims, and don't do anything about it, mashallah. Top Muslim, top bloke. Who, you want to become a deviant? Then talk about the Palestinian issue. And talk about boycotting and saying, I don't want to buy from this place because this place is directly funding the massacre of my brothers and sisters. When you do that, you become a deviant. This is what Al-Khudlan is. This is what Al-Khiyana is. This is what betrayal looks like in practical life. This is how you become a traitor and a munafiq and a hypocrite. Subhanallah. Ajib, bakhi. Wallahi ajib. Salafiyya, Salafiyya, what Salafiyya, ya khiyya, talk me about Allahu Akbar. Akul hal. Let us finish the hadith very quickly because it's already been 40 minutes. Wala yakdibuhu, wala yahqiruhu. He does not lie and deceive him, nor does he belittle him. At taqwa ha huna, at taqwa ha huna. I think, inshallah ta'ala, maybe we'll continue this hadith another time, inshallah ta'ala, because I don't want to go for too long. Jazakum Allahu khayran, wa sallallahu wa sallam, mubarak ala rasulina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين. If there's any questions, I'll entertain questions for five minutes. If not, السلام عليكم.
السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته